the spider that freaks me out the most, this might surprise you, it's not the tarantula, it's not the black widow, it's the daddy long legs. Yes, right? Ugh. If you don't know what a daddy long legs is, it's like a pencil eraser with a bunch of like spindly fucks coming out of it, you know? Like, oh, like no, 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 no. No, that bug's a pig. Mm -mm. And someone told me the other day that uh, I told them that they was afraid of daddy long leg spiders. And she goes, oh, well, actually, a daddy long leg spider is harmless to human beings because its fangs are not strong enough to pierce human skin. And to that I said, oh, do not fucking talk to me like that. <laughs> Don't speak to me that way. It's fangs are not strong enough. <laughs> like, socialize yourself, go outside, what are we doing? <laughs> Take that fang talk with you. I don't like that, at, I don't like it at all. And if you get nothing out of my set tonight, this is very important. She was wrong. She was very wrong. A daddy long legs is not harmless to human beings because no animal is harmless to humans if he makes you call him daddy. <laughs> ah, yeah, look at daddy's long legs. Oh, God. <laughs> Kill it, swish that pervert. We <laughs> can't have it. Some more personal news, everybody. I got married a couple months ago. Thank you so much. Thank you. Did we see her? Uh -huh. Got married to a human woman. Uh, who's alive and well. In that order. Got married and my wedding night, best night of my entire life. The morning after, worst morning of my entire life. Baby was hungover, I'm baby. I wake up, turn to my wife, and I go, I feel like a bag of trash. Do you have anything I can take? And she goes, nothing. And I said, nothing! <laughs> and I realize that voice doesn't scream provider. Doesn't even whisper, provider, <laughs> to be completely honest. So I asked if she had anything, she said nothing, and I go, Bacaw! So she's supportive, she starts going through her bag, and she pulls out these pills, and she goes, ah, I have mitol. And I said, what is that? It sounds efficient, right? Yeah? Vital. It sounds strong, like for guys. And she told me what it did, and it's for, if you don't know what might all is, it's what women take when they're experiencing pre pre you know, nervous, I just got premenstrual symptoms. Hang on, hang on. And I said, beggars can't be choosers. What are these symptoms? And she's looking at the back of the box and she goes, uh, all right, well, it actually, these help with cramps. And my tummy was a disaster. I was, I was like, I have terrible cramps. What else does it do? And she goes, it also helps with bloating. And I said, I'm in my 30s and I ate dinner after 6.30 last night. <laughs> I'm pretty bloated right now. We're two for two, this drug's incredible. What else does it do? And then she said, oh, and this version actually helps with headaches. And I go, give it to me! <laughs> I took two Midols, and I have never, ever felt so good <laughs> in my entire life. So now I just take Midol. I take it all the time. <laughs> I'm on four right now, and I'm glowing, Daddy. <laughs> I have an aura. <laughs> Being married means I'm a team player now. Team player over here, team player. 
thank you. So when my wife asked me to go on a ghost tour of a revolutionary war fort, <laughs> I said yes, even though that sounds like shit. <laughs> fuck would I want to do that? <laughs> terrible idea. Yeah, put me next to scare me people. You know who I'm talking about. Life's not horrifying enough for you. You gotta go, why go to a haunted house when you live in a haunted world? But fine. I went. I was dreading it. And it ended up being, after my wedding night, the second best night of my entire life. Because the tour guide is, was, uh, what, what is the term? A, a, a fucking asshole. Every time he mentioned something scary or supernatural, he immediately debunked it with a perfectly logical explanation <laughs> as to what had really happened. So I meet the tour guide, we're there, it's very dark out, and this guy, he's got a three-cornered hat on, big, big ass, bushy fucking mustache. This guy's like 6'5", 370, he's a mountain of a man, sword on his hip. If if walruses had a navy, he would be <laughs> an admiral. He'd be a full bird admiral <laughs> in the walrus navy. It's the craziest sentence I've ever said. Uh, <laughs> so we get to the first stop on the tour and the guy goes, all right, everybody, gather around, gather around. Now, if you gaze across this fort, what do you see? Nothing but green grass, grass everywhere. However, if you look at this one two foot by four foot rectangle, you don't see any grass at all. And as a matter of fact, grass stopped growing here, legend says, right after the final execution was carried out here in this very location. It's almost as if the grass is too haunted to grow here. Or... <laughs> Perhaps no grass grows here because it is the lowest point of the fort. <laughs> and whenever it rains, <laughs> all the water congregates in this one two foot by four foot rectangle. <laughs> rendering it impervious to seed. Is it a ghost? <laughs> or is it science? <laughs> Who's to say? And people are confused. <laughs> this is not what they signed up for. I'm thrilled. This is what I signed up for. I didn't know it yet, but it was. So the tour continues, and we get to the next stop on the tour, and the guy goes, all right, everybody, gather around, gather around, congregate, congregate. Well, I need everybody here to be quiet. What is that sound you hear? What is that sound? Listen up, what's that sound? Well, that's right, silence. <laughs> Can't hear nothing. However, multiple times over the year, we have our guests stay overnight here at the four. We do a little camp out. And multiple times at four o'clock in the morning, all guests have heard a loud shrieking noise break out throughout the fort. A sound reminiscent of Mrs. Fredrickson when she found out that her husband, Colonel Fredrickson, the master of the fort, was beheaded by a cannonball in battle. <laughs> and she was so upset, she hurled her body off the parapets of the fort screaming all the way down until her body crashed into the ground and she died. They say that noise was her ghost. Or <laughs> perhaps that noise happens because we're in an area native to the Northeastern Red Fox. <laughs> And their mating season 
is late October, early November. Oh, I don't know, right around the time of this tour right now? And the female Northeastern Red Fox's mating call is eerily similar to that of a bereaved woman. Is it a ghost? Is it a horny fox? <laughs> Who's to say? <laughs> and I have pissed my pants laughing. <laughs> I'm with urine. People are furious. There was a lady on her phone looking up a refund for the tour that she was currently on. So we get to the final stop on the tour and we go to what I believe was the old blacksmith shop. And this part was actually legitimately creepy. This part creeped me out. So we walk through this kind of a makeshift entrance and there's like candle light, you know, flickering on the walls. You hear the howling of the wind. It was, it was sinister in there. And the tour guy goes, all right, I've about to circle up, circle up. Now, you might notice that we walk through a little makeshift entrance. That's because that main door, it's, it's not stuck, but it would take many a strong man to open up that door. <laughs> However, every once in a while when we're closing up for the night, we have multiple tour guides report that they see that door wide open. It's almost as if the ghost of the blacksmith who literally cooked alive in this very location <laughs> swung that door open to get one more breath before he passes on to the other side. Perhaps it was his ghost that opened up that heavy door there. Or... <laughs> Perhaps that door is open because we're a mile and one half away from the airport. <laughs> And when those big old military planes take off, they create a sort of suction. A suction, oh, I don't know, strong enough to open up that big old door over there? <laughs> Who's to say? And this woman snaps. She goes, God damn it! you been giving tours at this fort? 20 years. <laughs> In your two decades giving tour at this fort, have you ever seen a ghost? Have you ever seen one ghost? My guy goes, Madam, I have noticed in my life that there is a direct correlation between one's level of education and whether or not they see ghosts. <laughs> I have a PhD, so no, I've never seen a ghost. I admire realism. I like it. I think it's an impressive thing to be able to pull off. Halloween, realistic costumes, they're the best. They have the most respect from me. Um, no laziness on Halloween, thank you. Gentlemen showing up in a dinner jacket and bow tie and pretending that you are James Bond, it will not do. Unless you show up with a pistol and PTSD, I do not. I'd better find you later in the party, showering in your clothes with another equally traumatized woman. Or being very good at poker, something like that. If you're a lady, sexy cats. No respect. No respect for the sexy cats. In fact, I've got a plan this year to undermine them. I'm gonna come as a realistic cat. If only to give my girlfriend another chance to even have one. I'm coming as a realistic cat. I've got the costume almost worked out. The final thing I need to figure out is a way to ensure that you can always see my anus. Some sort of clamp. <laughs> uh, 
like a splaying device, I suppose. It's harder than you think, because cats don't have bum cheeks, do they? No, they don't. They have a sort of panel with a bum hole in the middle. Hard to emulate that in a costume without help from Jim Henson's workshop. That would have been a horrible villain in Scooby-Doo, wouldn't it? Someone dressed like that. Thank God you're here, mystery gang. There's a giant realistic cat haunting the theme park. Oh, and you think it's a man? No, we know it's a man. We want you to get rid of him. He's got his anus out. Fred and Daphne would be like, oh, yeah. this, the police should do this one. For once, the police can have one. This man is disturbed. What a dull show that was, Scooby-Doo. What an incredibly boring... As a child, I loved it, but looking back, it's the most boring show in the world. Every single episode of Scooby-Doo was about financial crime. Low-level financial misdemeanor. Oh, no, but there was a guy dressed as Dracula. Yeah, but why was he dressed as Dracula? It was to scare away a board of investors. He was dressing as Dracula to devalue waterfront property. That's fraud. That's a financial crime, isn't it? All I'm saying is, does that not strike you as a phenomenally dry genre of crime? for a children's cartoon. Like, I can see why they need the ghost a bit. Just to spice things up, for God's sake. I mean, Hanna-Barbera must have had to have a meeting and gone, look, we've done a lot of test screenings, and children refuse to engage with our cartoon about a van of traveling auditors. <laughs> they find it dull. I... We're gonna make one of the auditors a dog. <laughs> the rest of them can be hippies. People, that's cool now. People like hippies. People always trust hippies with financial affairs. And the fraudster can be uh, Dracula. <laughs> Why would a fraudster be Dracula? I don't know, Stephen. I'm bringing solutions. <laughs> Try to save the show. One thing I would like to happen soon is for people to talk about vaginas and vulvas and all things happening down here in a kinder manner. I feel like there's been a lot of disrespect from men and women when it comes to how we discuss things below. For example, I was talking to a friend who's a woman and she was thinking about getting an IUD. If you don't know what an IUD is, it's birth control. It can be copper or plastic. They put it in your cervix. It's shaped like a capital letter T. And whenever sperm comes around, it's like, seats taken. <laughs> and then you don't get pregnant. So my friend was thinking about getting one and she goes, yeah, my doctor said that every so often I would have to put my fingers up there to make sure my IUD didn't move or fall out. And I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not putting my fingers up there. And I was like, what have you been doing your entire life? Not putting your fingers up there? And she's not unique in this way of thinking. I've talked to many women, I mean women, like above 30 who have said things like, I've never seen my vagina. I've never put my hands inside myself. This cannot continue. This has to stop. Even when it comes to period stuff, I use a menstrual cup and have for the last 10 years. Not the same one. Uh, <laughs> you do have to change them. If you don't know what a menstrual cup is, it's a silicone cup. You fold it, put it in, pops open, it catches all the blood, you dump the blood in the toilet, you wash the cup in the sink, and you put it back in. And I've described this process to other women, and sometimes I'll get the response of, ew. You touch your own blood? Yeah, it's mine, so it's fine. It might be weird if I was like, 
taking someone else's cup out. <laughs> or like shampooing with it. <laughs> or mixing it in a drink. It's the real Bloody Mary. <laughs> but it's going in the toilet, it's fine. Also, if you've ever owned a dog or a baby or an old person, <laughs> You've touched way worse. <laughs> also want to let you know that um, I'm currently wearing a cup right now. <laughs> Just to give you a little peek behind the beef curtain. <laughs> Isn't that fun? You just never know. You never know. You could be talking to somebody, looking them in the eye, and they could be holding. I'm like a molten lava cake right now. <laughs> She's got a little surprise. <laughs> but I like talking about this stuff because it doesn't have to be secretive or taboo or icky. It's so natural and normal. I just really want us to stop treating our parts as if it's a separate entity from our body. Just get in there. Get your hands in your pussies. Get those hands in those pussies. Grab yourself by your pussy. You're allowed to, it's yours. Men touch their dicks all the time. All the time. If you shake a man's hand, there's a chance. He was just rearranging some thin skin shortly before that point. We should be like that. I'm not saying we should like root around in there and start shaking people's hands. We should just check up on what's happening down there with as much frequency. I have friends who will let someone pound that pussy, destroy that pussy, beat that pussy up and they won't put a hand mirror down there to make sure it's still intact. It just got destroyed. You're not curious? Also, if you're in the crowd and you're like, oh my God, she's talking about me, I hate this. I'm not judging you. I don't judge anyone for this mentality because we're raised this way. We're raised in a culture that demonizes women for even having bodies and makes us feel like our parts are only important in relation to how they make other people feel. And we get taught these things at a very young age. I remember when I was younger, when I was PT, pre-tits. <laughs> My mom told me, if your dad is in the house, you shouldn't run around without a shirt on because it would be disrespectful to him. And my mom's not weird for telling me that. She told me that because her mom told her that. And I've talked to many other women who've gotten the same kind of teaching that we need to cover up and shrink for the men in our household. But it's like, if you think there's someone there who could potentially sexualize a child, let alone their own child, you need to get that predator out of the house. <laughs> And to make you feel better, my dad didn't show any signs <laughs> of sexualizing me or finding me sexy, no matter how hard I tried. <laughs> I was flirting my little ass off. Got no bites. I also feel like we need to tell little girls it's okay to touch yourself and explore your body. So we're not doing weird stuff later. <laughs> when I was younger, I was raised very Christian and I thought I was gonna go to hell if I touched myself down here. But I wanted to try because I heard stories. <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe if I don't do it, maybe if like, an inanimate third party does it, it'll be fine. 
So the first time I masturbated was with the handle of a lint roller. It didn't feel great. It was lint free after. And I had a friend, she washed it first. She used the filter of a fish tank because it vibrated and she at least knew it was supposed to do that. <laughs> we need to tell little girls it's okay to put your hands down there so we're not doing scavenger hunts in our house. <laughs> Trying to find things that fit. Anyone else want to share a household product they put inside of themselves? <laughs> I'm genuinely asking. Shout it out. A hairbrush? Yes, I love a multi-purpose tool. <laughs> it's not only for your locks, you can pretend it's a cock. <laughs> Electric toothbrush. Electric toothbrush, classic. Classic. You gotta fill those cavities. I love it. Was it? A spirograph pen. A spirograph pen? Now what is a spirograph? It vibrates? It vibrates? Oh, good, good, good. Not one of those normal ass pins. <laughs> She's like, I'm not fucking around with Bic. <laughs> no, 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 no. This thing has to work. <laughs> I love it. Anyone else? Cucumber. A cucumber, yes. Toss that salad, bitch, yes. Did it come out a pickle? <laughs> this is a little acidy in there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? The end of a couch. Oh, the end of a couch. I like that. I like that it's specifically the end of a couch. <laughs> She's like, it's the end of the couch, but my beginning. <laughs> the beginning of my journey. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you so much to everyone who shared. And for those who didn't, I know. I know. I love asking people about this stuff because it's so natural and normal and we don't talk about it that much. I feel like there's all this stuff in the media that encourages straight boys' sexual exploration. There's a whole movie franchise based on a boy fucking a pie. <laughs> I counted, there are eight American pie movies. <laughs> eight. I want like a Spirograph pin short film or something. <laughs> it was something. Also, if you have experimented and put a household product inside of yourself, you're in good company. You have our friends. <laughs> And there's a whole group of people who are known to have done the same thing. And those people are witches. <laughs> Allegedly, the imagery that we see of a woman riding a broomstick comes from women being caught putting the hallucinogenic drug DMT on the end of a broom and masturbating with it. So they were flying high on a broom. They were geniuses. They were putting brooms in their hoo-ha or their brew hoo ha They were getting high while they were getting off and men were like, kill them. Why would you persecute a person like that? That's not a woman you burn, that's a woman you marry. <laughs> Clearly she has good ideas. That's someone you follow to the ends of the earth like, what other cool stuff are you doing in the woods? <laughs> I wanna see. <laughs> I really think a lot of that witch hunt hysteria was just men being upset that women were having fun without them. <laughs> all the men are like, oh, you don't need me to help you come? And all the women are like, I have a broom. I can sweep myself off my own feet. 
I think white people are the only race of people that like to be scared for fun. <laughs> like, you feel me? Not an attack. Doesn't make you bad. Makes you interesting. <laughs> but not bad, but bungee jumping, skydiving, swimming with sharks. These are torture tactics. <laughs> Some of you pay for them. That's a curveball. I just think white people get to have a different relationship with fear. It doesn't make anyone bad. I just think it's an interesting observation. White people can have a different relationship with fear. Like, I think white people are the only people you could walk up to and just be like, hey, you want to do something scary today? And y'all will just outright say no. You feel me? You'll be like, well, what do you got in mind? <laughs> you feel me? But like, you go to anybody of another race, they're like, fuck no. But like, white people have follow-up questions sometimes. They're like, well, what are you thinking? <laughs> okay. Look at roller coasters, right? Theme park owners know white people love being scared so much, you'll pay for a picture of your own face terrified. <laughs> that's their business model. That's how reliable it is. They were like, yeah, that's where we're gonna get the rest of the money. <laughs> I've been in so many white homes and seen a framed picture <laughs> of the entire family terrified. Why? Why is that even a thing? I haven't been in one black family's home and seen a picture of four black people absolutely terrified. And they're like, yeah, that's the time I got stuck up at gunpoint right there. That's us. This is where I tried to sell my kids for my own life. So wild to me, man. And understand what I'm saying, because I understand I'm generally speaking, right? I'm speaking in generalities. I understand there are special case scenarios for everything. So please, like, I'm not being irresponsible with this. Just be on the same page with me. I'm just saying, generally speaking, though, that kind of holds true. <laughs> I'm saying, generally speaking, I feel like white people feel fear so rarely that y'all schedule it as a vacation activity. <laughs> Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, literally put it on a schedule. You're like, at 12, we're gonna have lunch. At one, we're gonna pet a tiger. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? A tiger? Huh? You know what no one black has ever said to me? I wanna go on a safari. <laughs> Not once. I got so many black friends, no one's ever wanted to go. It's our country, and we're like, nah. <laughs> But I have so many white friends that want to go. Doesn't make them bad, I'm just saying it's an interesting difference that you can spot and go, oh shit, okay. Why doesn't the safari sound insane to everybody? I didn't realize it was something we were so like polarized on. I thought we were all of the same mind, like that's fucking crazy. And apparently we don't agree. I never understood like why it isn't crazy. You wanna go to the zoo without the walls? That's what we wanna do? You want to take away my favorite part of the zoo? <laughs> the part where they can't get me? That, that's what we're taking away? Oh, all right. <laughs> Every time I go to the zoo, I'm, people are looking at the animals. I'm looking at the structures. I'm like, that's a good wall. <laughs> like that net, love that glass. <laughs> I've never understood it. Why doesn't a safari sound dangerous to everybody? It's not even a safe web browser. <laughs> you feel me? You ever open up Safari in front of somebody with Firefox? They're like, what the fuck are you doing, man? They make it sound like you just fucked a hooker with no condom. They're like, well, close it, throw it away. Who knows what's in there now? <laughs> it's so wild to me. I'll entertain it. Like, I'll talk to my white friends. Their defenses are so bad. And I'm not saying these are all white people's defenses. I'm saying you wouldn't want to be represented by my white friends. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> the stuff they argue, I go, that's a bad one. They'd be like, just go on a, just go on a Safari. You're going to be fine. I'm like, based on what? They're like, you got a tour guide. I'm like, that nigga's not a wall. <laughs> it's like, what do you think's gonna happen if a lion saw us and was like, oh, I'm about to eat these motherfuckers. You think he's just gonna be coming at y'all and be like, oh shit, they brought the guy. God damn it. <laughs> hey, wrap it up, guys. They brought the fucking guy. <laughs> you don't think the lion just sees more food? That's what I can't get. Like, that's not how your brain works. You think if a lion saw... <laughs> If a lion saw a black tour guide and two white tourists, you don't think he's going, oh shit, dark meat and mashed potatoes? Oh, fuck. Looks like KFC came to me. 
Like, what are we talking about? You know, what do you think the tour guide's gonna do? Entertain him for a second. What do you act? You don't think that's just a guy on the clock? You think that guy actually cares about your livelihood? A lion's coming at y'all, he sees it. You think this dude's just gonna step in the way? Oh, no, 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 lion. No, 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 lion. Not today, lion. You eat zebra, lion. Zebra, black and white. These people, just white, no good. No good, that's why we bring you mixed kid, Blade. Where has Blade gone? <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Like, I'm just fucking around, but you get where I'm coming from, right? Like, you get the point I'm getting at. That's all I'm saying. I just think fear is such a great example for us to explore the concept of privilege, where everybody can see it and realize no one's the villain, but you can identify the differences. I just think it's a great example, you know? Like, I, can I tell you something real wild? I got a wild theory. I think I'm on to something, I just don't know how to prove it. But I, I think I figured something out. I think I know why each race has a different relationship with fear, especially fear for fun. I think I can see what it is. It's kind of a wild theory, but I think I'm on to it. I think if you come from an oppressed group, you've never been so bored with life that you're willing to risk yours. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know Jews that like escape rooms. <laughs> y'all know y'all came to a comedy show, right? Like, I, I'm not running for office. I'm not the guy. I'm just here to make the funny points. I think I'm on some. I don't know Jews that like escape rooms. I don't know black people that are into bondage. <laughs> Whips and chains, you said. Mm. <laughs> Fool me once. <laughs> I don't know any Mexicans that want to do a tough mutter. That's a real good one. Like, if you know what a Tough Mudder is, that's on point. If you don't know what a Tough Mudder is, just so we're on the same page, a Tough Mudder, it's one of those races you do out in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's, a, it's a foot race where you're just going through an obstacle course. You're going through like water hazards, running over hills, running through like electrified fences. I don't know one Mexican who's like, again? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, let's do it. They're like, get the fuck out of here. I did that to get in, not fit in. Fuck out of here, my guy. <laughs> All I'm trying to get at here, I'm not trying to attack anybody, I just want us to understand this concept better so we can get past it, right? Anytime I see somebody online or on TV or wherever say that privilege doesn't exist, I need you to understand, you're not a bad person, but you are wrong, <laughs> all right? I'm not trying to come at you, but you are actually wrong and you sound ridiculous to people who do understand. Just take the time to understand. All right, privilege exists. Bro, I'm a six foot three black man. There's not one person in here that thinks my dick's small. <laughs> That's my privilege. I get big dick privilege. Doesn't matter if you're right or not. You didn't think it. That's my privilege, man. If I was an Asian comic saying all this same shit, you wouldn't have thought the same thing. Beyond, there's not one woman in here who's been at a bar, seen an Asian dude and been like, oh, he might dick me down. <laughs> and he might, he might do it, but you weren't thinking it. That's my privilege. I get big dick privilege. It's a hardship I have to work over every day. <laughs> Trying to overcome. <laughs> but when you say privilege doesn't exist, you know what I always think of? It's always this story, it's such a banana story. When I was a kid, I remember telling my dad what my dream job was, okay? I told him I was five years old, I told him I wanted to be in the NBA. My dad is a, a black man from Alabama in the 1940s, okay? He's not, a, he's not a big dreamer, right? He's a very practical man. His vibe is more like, survive. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's what he's like. And I remember I told him I wanted to be an NBA player. You know what he told me? Just have a backup plan. I was like, God damn, can I dream for a little bit? I'm, I'm five. <laughs> But that's what he felt like he needed to communicate to me based on his experiences in this country as a black man. 
Fair enough. I accept that perspective. I hear you. Meanwhile, my best friend, next door neighbor, I was there when this happened. I remember seeing him tell his dad what he wanted to be. He said that he wanted to be the first black president in U.S. history. You know what his dad told him? Anything you put your mind to, you can achieve. Isn't that beautiful? But that kid was white. <laughs> Don't tell me white privilege doesn't exist, my guy. I, I was there. I saw that shit with my own eyes. I saw this white father, who is a good man, I still talk to him to this day, see his white son look at him and go, I want to be the first black leader of the free world. And with me still in the room, he looks at his son and goes, well, if you just work hard enough, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Tell this kid no. <laughs> Tell him that one's not for him. Couldn't do it. Privilege is just such an interesting topic, and I don't want to harp on it too much longer, but I just want to drive this point home, okay? I do feel like if we're being fair to both sides, there are privileges that white people do get attacked for, and I don't think it's fair. If we're being critical of both sides and we're trying to come together, right? I do think there's one thing I've seen y'all do that I do find very funny, and I hope you find it as funny as I do. And I don't think it's fair that you do get slacked for it. I do think white people are the only race of people that I have seen get offended on behalf of a group they are not a part of. <laughs> like, you know who to picture, right? And that's all I'm saying. But here's the thing. I don't think that's something to attack you for because I believe at its core that's something of goodwill. That just means you, care, you cared for another group of people. You were trying to speak on their behalf because you thought you were doing right by them, right? That's, that's a good thing. That's nothing to attack you for. It may not be the way we want you to do it, but that's okay, right? <laughs> And here's the thing about it, it's, really, it's a really complicated situation because if you look online, you see this happen all the time. White people will do something on behalf of black people. Black people go, don't do that. And then white people go, oh my bad, what would you prefer me do? And black people go, I don't know. <laughs> and then we're just left nowhere. But both of those sides are fair, to be clear. Those are both fair dispositions. Sometimes it's hard to come up with a resolution. You just know when someone isn't doing the right one. That's fair. And it's fair to care and not know what to do. So it still leaves us in the same place of what do you do when you're trying to have someone else's back? I think I came up with something. <laughs> Hear me out here, all right? Listen, I think this is a universal way to show support for a group you're not a part of. You can use this in any group. I don't know anyone who would turn this down. And I don't know what you do after this, but you can always start with this. <laughs> I'll give you an example. As a black person, if I'm there, I don't like it when I see somebody white tell somebody else white that they can't say the N-word. Cause that's my line. You feel me? Like, that's what I get to say. Why are you trying to upstage me, man? This is my big moment. You know what I need you to do? I need you to say motherfucker after my line. That's support. You get what I'm saying? Dude, I get to go, you don't get to call me a nigger, and then you come in like, motherfucker, and I'll be like, okay, so now I feel strong. I feel supported. We're a team. You feel what I'm saying? I'm done with allies. Be my motherfucker. I need more of those. That's what I need. Because I don't think there's anything scarier to a racist person than a black man with a white army. He'd be like, oh, fuck, his cause must be good. I think that's actually scary. Stop being my ally. Be my motherfucker. I don't know when I started caring about all this kind of shit. If you saw my show like five years ago, I wasn't talking about nothing like this, you know? I don't know what happens. I got older, I you know, started voting. <laughs> you start voting, you're like, all right, I need to throw some opinions out of here because I'm hearing some wild shit. It's weird as you age, the way your priorities change, the way your life changes. I'm not trying to be like, aging sucks. I, I, I'm cool with it. But it, it is weird the ways in which you'll age that you didn't anticipate. Does that make sense? Those are the ones that are weird for me. Like the regular one, like my knees are sore. I got to wake up early. I'll probably go to a matinee. Like those are the, I'm fine. I was ready for that. But the weird ones where I'm like, nobody told me that was part of it. What the fuck is going on with me? Like I heard, the other day I heard a rap song I couldn't relate to one part of. I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> That's a weird moment of self-realization. Look, I don't know if you've ever been black before. I've done it my whole life. You know? <laughs> if you hear an entire rap song and you end up going, shit, I don't think any of that was for me. <laughs> what a weird moment in your black existence of like, where do I fit into this? 
I still remember what the guy said. I, I swear to God, I think you'll relate. He, I remember he went, I got an actress on my mattress. I'm going to hit it three times in one night. That's a hat trick. And my brain just went, exhausting. <laughs> That's all I felt. Three times in one night, I was like, not for me. That's crazy. Three times, bro, you don't got work in the morning? <laughs> Nobody's pussy's better than sleep. I'll tell you right now. I, And that's not an attack. The older you get, the truer that rings, and you fucking know it. That's not an attack. Ladies, I'm sure your pussy's great. <laughs> sleep is good. I like sleep more than sex, and it ain't even close. I know that. You know how I know I like sleep more than sex? I go to sleep every day. I don't miss one. I only have sex sometimes. And even when I have sex, when I'm done, I'm like, God damn, I want to go to sleep. If that song was about me, it would have been like, I got an actress on my mattress. I'm gonna hit it one time, then I'm napping. That's, the, that's my entire... I'm like, yo, this, hey. <laughs> Trying to hit them NyQuil bars, bruh. <laughs> I just think it's so weird to see the things that make you change as you get older. I think it's weird to look at other people your age and see the shit they care about versus the shit you care about. You ever seen that? You're on Facebook and you're like, what are they fucking ranting about? You ever have those moments where like, this is the hill you want to die on? This is the cause you stand for of all the things? Have you seen this group of people that's trying to get Disney's Snow White canceled? Oh my God, I'm losing my mind over it. There are adults, our eight voters, people whose votes count the same as yours. <laughs> They're out here trying to bring down a cartoon. They're so dedicated. Have you heard the argument? She never gave consent to the kiss that woke her up. That's what they're arguing. Now listen, I'm not trying to be on the wrong side of an issue. I'm not trying to sound like I got some hot takes. I'm just saying, you've all seen the movie, right? We've all seen Snow White. All I'm saying, <laughs> it really feels like they're leaving out the whole he did it to save her life part, huh? Is that not a crucial detail in the context of that circumstance? Like if you were the prince and that happened to you, wouldn't you want to confront her? Like, hey, you want to explain the rest of that though so I don't sound like a creep? Appreciate that, because you got me out here sounding like Bill Cosby right now. And it, it, I'm just saying, that dude was putting them to sleep. I'm just waking them up. This is a totally different thing. I don't think you should be allowed to make someone who attempted to save your life out to be a predator. That's the only line in the sand I'm drawing here. I think that deserves to be defended. If I tried to save you, I'm not a creep. When I was a kid, when I was seven, right? I grew up in Tampa. When I was seven, I was at the beach. Right, and I remember I was swimming in the ocean. I'm swimming, I'm swimming poorly, if I'm being honest. I'm drowning, let's be honest, I'm drowning. <laughs> I'm for sure drowning. I passed out. I sunk under the water. I had to be saved by a male lifeguard. I shit you not, I woke up on the beach to a male lifeguard giving me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And when I came to, I completely understood what that situation was. There was no confusion. I wasn't like, oh, nigga, I'll see you in court. Okay. okay. <laughs> You ever heard of Me Too? Well, Me Three now, bro. Uh, I, just, I just think it's such a weird circumstance to like, this is the hill you want to die on for this argument? I'm not against consent culture. I'm asking, is this where you really want to make your stand? Within this premise? That's what's odd about it to me, you know? Like, have y'all gone back and watched the movie, like as adults? It's weird, man. It's real weird. Do you remember what the curse is? True love's kiss will wake her up. That's real specific. Like they really narrowed down the danger that could have come. You gotta be pretty sure to go for it. It's not like they went, hey man, first one to kiss her gets to keep her. <laughs> <laughs> then a bunch of dudes started marching to get to her first. My hoe, my hoe, back up. Okay, you get it. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's just such a weird place to make your argument. And I can understand, to be clear, I can understand where you're coming from if you were just like, I just wish it wasn't a kiss that he had to do to save her. I can appreciate that. I'm just saying, but can you stop making it sound like he, he squeezed the titty when he did it? That's more, <laughs> that's more where I'm coming from, you know? I wanna make this very clear, because this is a tricky topic to make jokes about, obviously. At the end of the day, I understand my place within this premise, right? I'm a man lightly making jokes about sexual assault. I understand that. 
And I can never put myself in the position of a woman in relation to a topic like this. I understand that. All I can do is empathize the best I can from the perspective that I have. And that's as a black man in this country. And I'm just saying, as a black man in this country, I don't get what you're talking about. <laughs> Let me say hypothetically, right? Hypothetically speaking, I'm in a coma. I'm dying. And you say the only way to save me is for a white dude to whisper the N-word in my ear. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Here's the kicker, if we're being honest, I don't need him to ask for my permission. My life's on the line. There are bigger priorities at hand. Do what you gotta do. Bro, I don't care if you whisper. Get on all fours for all I care. Nigger! <laughs> Nigger! I'd be like, hey, I heard you the first time, Steve. Goddamn. <laughs> Can you give me a sec to wake up? I take a second. No, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but we're gonna talk about that second one. You don't get to call me two niggers, and then y'all would say, look at my army foreman, dog. Look at us. That's how you fucking do it. That's a weird example. Let me give you a better one. I just wanted to see what you were going to do. Let's say hypothetically, I'm in a coma, and I'm dying. And you say the only way to save me is true love's kiss, just like the movie. I assume y'all would want that handled the exact same way I would want that handled. I would want somebody to go round up everybody in town, form a line, take my weekend at Bernie's body, prop that shit up in a kissing booth, put some cool ass shades on that motherfucker, look back at the line and go, all right, everybody without herpes goes first. You feel me? Is that not what you would want? Like, let's be real for a second. I want to make it very clear. I am not against consent culture. On the contrary, couldn't be more for it. But that's not the place to make your stand. I do think after all of the allegations we've heard from women over the last couple of years, men should be making more of a point to showcase to women how much we do have your backs, how much you are going to see like a change in the behavior you've been encountering, even if we're not the individuals responsible for it. What I'm getting at is that we need to show that we have your backs. You feel me? But the question then becomes, how do we show you that? Here's what I'm pitching. <laughs> Men, start making consent your biggest kink. <laughs> Take a sec, process what I'm saying. Start making consent the kinkiest shit that you're into. Start being a fucking freak for yeses, you feel me? <laughs> Like after the Me Too movement, show them what you've learned. Anytime a woman goes, how do you like it? I'm like, with permission. Like I lean in. I lean in. Bro, I don't unzip it till you say please. You could be like, get over here and fuck me. I'd be like, mm, is that how we ask? <laughs> At this point, having sex with me is like binge watching Netflix. Every so often, I interrupt the flow just to be like, do you still want this? My father passed away. My mother's convinced that my father's a ghost. My father's ghost is in the house and the ghost isn't talking to her because he's upset with her. <laughs> yeah, I call my mother every week. Every week it's the same thing. Hi, Ma. Hi, Adam. I'm fine. I think your father's well. He's in the other room. He's still not talking to me. <laughs> he thinks I'm going to apologize first. I'm not apologizing first because I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not the one who died, Joe. <laughs> he's pouting with that look on his face. Let me tell you something. My father was a ghost. He wouldn't be pouting. He would come right through the wall like, Poof. Father, you're a ghost. Yeah, yeah. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Have you come to show me my path in life? No, I've come to show you the thermostat that's up to 78 degrees. <laughs> I've only been dead, dead a week. You're just burning my money, huh, Barry? <laughs> Running around in short sleeve shirts, eating the whole neighborhood. Sure, live it up. Daddy's dead. I ain't pouting, Louise. This is my resting dead face. <laughs> yeah, my father wasn't scared of nothing. Nothing. The death came for him, the guy with the sickle and the hood. 
I am here for you. I thought I told you to wait in a truck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't scared of nothing, my father. Well, bugs. <laughs> yeah, he didn't like bugs. He didn't want to be buried in the ground. This, this is what he did. He took me into the garage. He goes, come here, I took care of everything. He opened up the toolbox, took out this brochure. He says, you see that? That's a crypt. A crypt? What are you, a Romanian duke? <laughs> it's above ground, waterproof. Look at that, huh? Family crest. Is that our family? Nah, I picked it out of the book. <laughs> I like it. It looks like a Cadillac emblem, doesn't it? This way your mother and I are going to rest in peace. Rest in peace? You don't get along in a four-bedroom house. You couldn't spend eternity in this concrete bunker with mom? You know what that's going to be like? Ooh, Joe, it's hot. Open the door. We ain't opening no doors. That's what the worms want you to do. You open up the door, they crawl up here. They're going to crawl right in my ass. You watch. I worked my whole life. I got to take a worm in the ass? I don't think so. Door stays closed. <laughs>